the Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra. Chapter 9 Initiation into the Non-Dual Dharma Thereat, Vimalakirti said to the Bodhisattvas present, Virtuous ones, each of you please say something about the non-dual dharma as you understand it. In the meeting, a bodhisattva called Comfort in the Dharma said, Virtuous ones, birth and death are a duality, but nothing is created and nothing is destroyed. Realization of this patient endurance leading to the uncreate is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva called Guardian of the Three Virtues said, Subject and object are a duality, for where there is ego, there is also its object. But since fundamentally there is no ego, its object does not arise. This is initiation into the non-dual Dharma. The Bodhisattva never winking said, Responsiveness, or the second aggregate, and unresponsiveness are a duality. If there is no response to phenomena, the latter cannot be found anywhere. Hence there is neither accepting nor rejecting of anything, and neither karmic activity nor discrimination. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Highest Virtue said, Impurity and purity are a duality. When the underlying nature of impurity is clearly perceived, even purity ceases to arise. Hence, this cessation of the idea of purity is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, winner of Samadhi by looking at the stars, said, External disturbance and inner thinking are a duality. When disturbance subsides, thinking comes to an end, and the absence of thought leads to non-discriminating. Reaching this state is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva skillful eye said, Monistic form and formlessness are a duality. If monistic form is realized as fundamentally formless, with relinquishment of formlessness in order to achieve impartiality. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Wonderful Arm said, The Bodhisattva mind and the Shravaka mind are a duality. If the mind is looked into as void and illusory, there is neither Bodhisattva mind nor Shravaka mind. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Pusa said, Good and evil are a duality. If neither good nor evil arises so that formlessness is realized to attain reality, this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Simha or Lion said, Weal and woe are a duality. If the underlying nature of woe is understood, Woe does not differ from weal. If the diamond indestructible wisdom is used to look into this, with neither bondage nor liberation coming into play, this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Lion's Fearlessness said, The mundane and the supramundane are a duality. If all things are looked into impartially, Neither the mundane nor the supermundane will arise, with no differentiation between form and formlessness. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Pure Interpretation said, Activity and non-activity are a duality, but if the mind is kept from all mental conditions, it will be void like space and pure and clean wisdom will be free from all obstructions. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Narayana said, The mundane and the supermundane are a duality, but the underlying nature of the mundane is void or immaterial, and is but the supermundane, which can be neither entered nor left, 
and neither overflows like the stream of transmigration nor scatters like smoke. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva skillful mind said, Samsara and Nirvana are a duality. If the underlying nature of Samsara is perceived, there exists neither birth nor death, neither bondage nor liberation, and neither rise nor fall. Such an understanding is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, direct insight, said, The exhaustible and the inexhaustible are a duality. If all things are looked into exhaustively, both the exhaustible and the inexhaustible cannot be exhausted, and the inexhaustible is identical with the void, which is beyond both the exhaustible and the inexhaustible. Such an interpretation is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, upholder of universality, said, The ego and non-ego are a duality. Since the ego cannot be found, where can the non-ego be found? He who perceives the real nature of the ego will not give rise to dualities. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, lightning perception, said, Enlightenment and unenlightenment are a duality, but the underlying nature of unenlightenment is enlightenment, which should also be cast away. If all relativities are discarded and replaced by non-dual impartiality, this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, Priya Darsana said, Form and voidness are a duality, but form is identical with voidness, which does not mean that form wipes out voidness, for the underlying nature of form is void itself. So are the other four aggregates, reception, conception, discrimination, and consciousness in relation to voidness. Consciousness and voidness are a duality, yet consciousness is identical with voidness, which does not mean that consciousness wipes out voidness, for the underlying nature of voidness is void of itself. A thorough understanding of this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, understanding the four elements, said, The four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, and their voidness are a duality, but the underlying nature of the four elements is identical to that of voidness. Like the past before the four elements came into being, and the future when they scatter away, which are both void, the present when they appear is also void. Identical understanding of the underlying nature of all four elements is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva deep thought said, I and form are a duality, but if the underlying nature of the I is known with neither desire nor anger nor stupidity in relation to things seen, this is nirvana. Likewise, the ear and sound, the nose and smell, the tongue and taste, the body and touch, and the mind and ideation are dualities. But if the underlying nature of the mind is known, with neither desire, anger, or stupidity in relation to things heard, smelled, taste, touched, and thought, this is nirvana. Resting in this state of nirvana is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, inexhaustible mind, said, Charity perfection and the dedication of its merits toward realizing the all-knowledge are a duality, but the underlying nature of charity is dedication toward the all-knowledge. Likewise, discipline perfection, patience perfection, zeal perfection, meditation perfection, 
and wisdom perfection, with dedication to the all-knowledge, are five dualities, but their underlying natures are but dedication to the all-knowledge, while realization of their oneness is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Profound Wisdom said, Voidness, formlessness, and non-activity are three different gates to liberation, and when each is compared to the other two, there are three dualities. But voidness is formless, and formlessness is non-active. For when voidness, formlessness, and non-activity obtain, there is neither mind, nor intellect, nor consciousness. And liberation through either one of these three gates is identical with liberation through all the three. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, unstirred sense organs, said, Buddha, dharma, and sangha are three different treasures, and when each is compared to the other two, there are three dualities. But Buddha is identical with dharma, and dharma is identical with sangha. For the three treasures are non-active, and are equal to space, with the same equality for all things. The realization of this equality is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva unimpeded mind said, Body and its eradication in nirvana are a duality, but body is identical with nirvana. Why? Because if the underlying nature of body is perceived, no conception of existing body and its nirvanic condition will arise, for both are fundamentally non-dual, not being two different things. The absence of alarm and dread when confronting this ultimate state is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Superior Virtue said, The three karmas produced by body, mouth, and mind are different when each is compared to the other two and make three dualities, but their underlying nature is non-active. So non-active body is identical with non-active mouth, which is identical with non-active mind. These three karmas being non-active, all things are also non-active. Likewise, if wisdom, prajna, is also non-active, this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Field of Blessedness said, Good conduct, evil conduct, and motionlessness are different, and when each is compared to the other two, make three dualities. But the underlying nature of all three is voidness, which is free from good, evil, and motionlessness. The non-arising of these three is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, Majestic Blossom, said, The ego and its objective are a duality, but if the underlying nature of the ego is looked into, this duality vanishes. If duality is cast away, there will be no consciousness, and freedom from consciousness is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, treasure of the threefold potency, said, Realization implies subject and object, which are a duality. But if nothing is regarded as realization, there will be neither grasping nor rejecting, and freedom from grasping and rejecting is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, moon in mid-heaven, said, Darkness and light are a duality. Where there is neither darkness nor light, this duality is no more. Why? 
because in the state of samadhi resulting from the complete extinction of sensation and thought, there is neither darkness nor light, while all things disappear. A disinterested entry into this state is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva Ratna Mudra, or Precious Symbol, said, Joy in Nirvana and sadness in samsara are a duality which vanishes when there is no longer joy and sadness. Why? Because where there is bondage, there is also desire for liberation. But if fundamentally there is no bondage, who seeks liberation? Where there is neither bondage nor liberation, there will be neither joy nor sadness. This is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, gem on the head, said, Orthodoxy and heterodoxy are a duality, but he who dwells in, that is, realizes, orthodoxy, does not discriminate between orthodoxy and heterodoxy. Keeping from these two extremes is initiation into the non-dual dharma. The Bodhisattva, joy and reality, said, Reality and unreality are a duality, but he who realizes reality does not even perceive it, still less unreality. Why? Because reality is invisible to the ordinary eyes and appears only to the eye of wisdom. Thus, realization of the eye of wisdom which is neither observant nor unobservant, is initiation into the non-dual dharma. After all the bodhisattvas had spoken, they asked Manjushri for his opinion on the non-dual dharma. Manjushri said, In my opinion, when all things are no longer within the province of either word or speech, and of either indication or knowledge, and are beyond questions and answers, this is initiation into the non-dual dharma. Thereat, Manjushri asked Vimalakirti, All of us have spoken. Please tell us what is the Bodhisattva's initiation into the non-dual dharma. Vimalakirti kept silent, without saying a word. At that, Manjushri exclaimed, Excellent, excellent! Can there be true initiation into the non-dual dharma until words and speech are no longer written or spoken? After this initiation into the non-dual dharma had been expounded, 5,000 bodhisattvas at the meeting were initiated into it, thereby realizing the patient endurance of the uncreate.